Once Upon a Tower is the latest romantic novel by New York Times bestselling author Eloisa James. The story has been described as a literary hybrid of Romeo and Juliet and Rapunzel combined with a sparkling new twist. In addition to writing historical romances, Eloisa James is a professor and teaches Shakespeare at Fordham University. We're really excited to have you here on Connecticut Style. Uh, before we get talking to the, about the book, tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I'm a daughter of a poet, Robert Bly. So, oh, so it's in your blood, I guess. <laughs> well, not really. I mean, romance is kind of, you know, it's like Simon and Garfunkel born into the Bach family, right? He won the American Book Award, and this is not going to win the American Book Award. But I loved them from the time I was growing up. My grandmother had a subscription. Is that so right? She read all of Barbara Carlin's, and I used to read them secretly. And um, then when I, you know, I became a professor, got my PhD right here in Connecticut, and decided to make some money. So that really is where I started, was I decided I had to pay off my student loans. Got Thank it. you, Yale. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you, why were you drawn to historical romances, would you say? Well, I'm a Shakespearean, okay. so I really understand the past. And every day I teach plays. You know, I teach people walking and talking over and over and over. And this, play, this book, for example, is partly from an idea that came from teaching Romeo and Juliet. So for me, the past is very easy. Mm -hmm. For me, doing a hero who is, say, an African-American baseball player would be impossible. Sure. So. And really, what woman doesn't like fairy tales? Exactly. It makes for yeah. a great story. Now, is there a certain time period that you tend to write in? I've written in the Georgian period, like think Marie Antoinette, the big wigs. Sure. But mostly I write in the Regency period, which is Jane Austen's period. That's a very, very popular time and you know these are these are fantasy these are escapes so those were really fun clothes I mean a little dress yeah, sure right <laughs> the guys are in tights and the whole thing is good got it all right so let's talk about the book once upon a tower set the story up for us well I was teaching Romeo and Juliet and I started thinking what if Romeo and Juliet's parents hadn't been so bad-tempered right that would mean you go to a ball you're in love with Rosalind you see Juliet you fall in love with her two seconds later you're married to her yes. marriage is hard so <laughs> I thought it would be really fun to have a very young hero and heroine. He's Scottish, he doesn't know much about English women. He walks into a ballroom, falls in love, asks for her hand in marriage the next day. They're married. The next day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now they're married. Okay, now they're married, right? He's a duke, he owns a tremendous amount of land. He thinks she's very sweet and very docile and so quiet and going to be such a wonderful addition to his household. In fact, her touch burns him. Huh? That's because she has a fever of 103. Oh, so something's wrong not, with her. <laughs> yeah. She just had the flu, but she's not quiet and docile. And that's the adventures yes. that we get into in the and book. And neither is Juliet, exactly. Got it. Now, why did you choose Scotland as the backdrop? I needed somebody who would be very romantic, you know? And so, mm -hmm. poetry, actually, I'm looped in the loops of her hair. He wrote this very fervent poetry. So it's not poetic like that. It's a romance. But I think Scotland's a very romantic place. Not that I've been there. I'll have to visit, I suppose. <laughs> no, we should all go. Um, no, I know the main character plays the cello. How does that uh, form into the story? Well, you know, it's difficult. If you're writing historical romance, you want a heroine to be interesting so that people reading, women reading her now, want to read about her. But if all she's going to do is buy gowns, it, it's hard. <laughs> so my heroine is one of the best cello players in all of England. But she'll never perform. Oh. So it's interesting, the gender thing there. She can't perform because a woman couldn't perform with a big instrument between her legs. Get it. Um, would you say she has any of your personality traits? Always. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't put yourself in these books, they fail. Because people constantly say to me, I want to make money, right? I want to write a romance. Mm -hmm. If you don't write yourself into it, even though it's a fantasy, it will never succeed. So when I was a kid, I actually went to Interlaken, which is a music camp, and I studied the flute, not the cello. Okay. But I saw a lot of people who had her level of passion for music. I'm assuming probably your own emer uh, emotional experiences would also play into that sure. when you're writing these? Yep. Um, all right. Well, let's talk about an upcoming book signing where we could find you in Connecticut. Right. And where, where is that? We'll put the information up on the screen, actually. There we go. This is happening... Uh, Stratford. The Stratford Library, June 8th at 11 o'clock. That's fantastic. And you'll have copies of your book there, I'm assuming? There will be copies of the book. And I would just add that I, they're going to have refreshments, but I believe there is limited Amazon? seating. Oh, okay. So, so somebody should call up and please come. Love to see you. And where can we find your book? Everywhere. Just about everywhere. Yeah, pretty much everywhere. It's in your grocery store and it's in Amazon and it's in the bookstores. And um, 
Dollar. All right, we'll find it then. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, coming up next, Neil Fuentes and Billy DeCrosta show us how to make a delicious Venezuelan dessert. When style returns, we'll be right back.